it was hot. <laughs> was it Jesus? Mm -hmm. I recorded the whole thing. I have blackmail. You will. <laughs> and it was that simple exchange that would start what would be Tythron Productions. Hi, I'm Mark Tashazel. And I wanted to create a video to basically explain the sort of foundations and beginnings of what caused Tythron Productions to be a thing, how I got into video editing and the things that I produce. So to basically go into a bit more detail about the clip that you just saw, uh, so I would hang around some friends on VRChat pretty regularly, and Mel and Nappy were two in particular that usually would just have some... Uh, you know, hanging out, checking up on other people, going around, seeing what kind of silliness we can get into. And unbeknownst to me, Mel had started recording our particular VR chat adventures. And as you saw in that particular clip, he made it aware that he was recording. And I looked at him and I'm like, might need to see that later. And then in return, he said, you will. And I never would have thought that that simple interaction would lead to where I'm at today. So to explain, initially, when these recordings were going on, Mel would just basically just record the entire, the entire session of however long we would be hanging out, which usually was several hours. Now, while that in of itself was great, the problem is, is that these you know, these recordings would get particularly long and while they were nice to record memories and whatnot, they weren't exactly the most watchable things because sometimes nothing was really going on and really it's just a, a raw recording of everything. So after quite a few of these were made, I kind of thought about it and I was like, you know, I wonder if maybe I would just take this raw video just get like some basic uh, video editing program and essentially like break up and make clips of like the highlights of our experiences. Therefore taking, you know, what would be hours of content and condensing it more into a watchable period of time. So usually the compilations would average anywhere from 45 minutes, maybe sometimes a bit over, but either way, about an hour of content that's you know full of highlights is definitely a lot more digestible than just several hours of well we'll see what happens so i got shotcut which was my first editing program i decided to delve into i liked how it was pretty simple pretty easy to get into and it allowed me to pretty much do some basic editing right away and thus, after uh, five episodes, I guess we'll call them, uh, which were the raw footages, basically, the first compilation was born, which was basically the first five episodes of our VR Chat Adventures condensed down into a single compilation. And this worked out pretty well. So I kept doing it. I can't remember how many compilations and I was, but at some point I decided to test the waters with some other avenues. So I started doing things with poetry that I had done in the past and just kind of recording me in some worlds and just some basic readings of them and doing like little scenery things with it, scenery edits. And that was, you know, that was, that was cool. But I guess I was just doing that just to kind of get a feel for more stuff, like starting to go beyond just simple editing of uh, works that someone else had done, but now my own things that I'm starting to do. So I did quite a few of these and eventually I had it in me to try something a little fun. Uh, it was getting to be around the time when Ferality Uluma was a thing. By the way, a lot of this uh, initial stuff started almost three years ago, actually. So this would have been back in 
uh, around March, I would say, of 2021 was when I started getting involved in doing these compilations. And this later led into doing the, um, the poetry stuff that I had mentioned. And then Frau de Luma was a thing that was going on as far as online conventions. I uh, had my own involvement with that for a, a brief time where I would voice over the trailers that were made for them. But that would pretty much come to an end for uh, my own reasons. What I ended up doing was I made a parody video of the Ferality Luma Spray, and that was pretty amusing. Um, that was a lot, of, a lot of fun. Again, pretty simple work. I was just filming myself just doing like a PSA kind of thing where I was just doing a, a silly bit about it, like how dangerous it was, and it's not something you should actually drink because there's a, a, basically a running gag at the time that, you know, you, people drinking the spray for whatever various reasons, whether it was to, you know, get some kind of enhancement or something like that, or uh, it actually tastes good or whatever, you know, just stupid stuff, kind of almost reminiscent of that, of like, Tide Pods or anything like that, where it's just a, a big joke about something you shouldn't actually consume. Uh, so I played into that, needless to say. And that was fun. That was great. Um, people liked it. It was, it was funny. It was silly. Well, the unfortunate thing with that is, and I'm going to get into this a little bit, but I'm not going to touch upon it too much because it kind of will explain some of these other videos that we're about to get into. After uh, Luma, I wasn't doing any more of the uh, volunteer work for Virality. Uh, Legends came and went, and then the following year was Feraldi Aqua, which was a pretty much a follow-up to the original Luma convention in that it took place in the Oceans of Luma. In fact, originally that was the intended name of it, but they decided to call it Aqua just to be a little more stylized and to kind of, I would imagine, coincide with the naming convention that Luma had set. So it made sense. But either way. Um, and of course, with Aqua came another immersion spray. And I felt I was in a good position to do another parody of that, which I did. But this time, I decided to go a little more in depth with it. I, I wanted to have a little more fun. So I decided to create kind of this whole like dramatic like lead up uh, to it. And I wanted to also start experimenting more with like ideas and concepts that just go beyond just regular PSA and just basic edits, more actual produced stuff that was original to me and my ideas and, and whatnot. So, so I made the parody video for Aqua with that in mind, uh, kind of creating the scene where I'm just talking to somebody. You don't actually see who's on the screen, but you, you can tell I'm talking to somebody with the way I'm just sitting there. And, uh, basically it's after this whole long dramatic dialogue about like me explaining how this person supposedly ruined people's lives and things like that and um, how their brother has been responsible for these things we then find out when the camera cuts that the <laughs> subject in question is actually a bottle of the Feraldi aqua spray hence the brother to the luma spray uh, and this, of course, then led into the PSA of Aqua as well, uh, which then pretty much ended with this sort of really weird vibe at the end that I don't think a lot of people knew what to think of. And, uh, and that's, that's fine. That, that was definitely the intent to create something that was a bit unhinged, not, not terribly so, but definitely something that would be unexpected and create a sort of, huh, well, that was, that was interesting. That was a thing. Um, and that was, that was pretty good. Also around this time, 
uh, you'll notice in the initial scenes here that I started toying with avatar uh, puppeteering where the facial expressions and whatnot are controlled via a two axis uh, control method. So essentially I'm using the thumbstick to navigate and provide uh, biases and weights to how the face expresses itself. And this definitely created a, a much more dynamic look to my presentation. So after realizing how well this worked, I kept this in mind and this would later translate into future works, which we'll see here shortly. Now, the unfortunate thing about uh, this particular parody is that uh, I basically left Ferality for my own reasons. I'm not going to get into it too much, but um, uh, after showing um, somebody in particular this video and them not really uh, acknowledging it, just sort of, uh, I guess, really drove me a bit further away from from that, unfortunately. But again, I, you know, I don't think it's really appropriate for me to go into it too much here. After all, this is about the origins of things, and I don't want to, you know, bring up some old dirt like that. But I kind of have to bring it up briefly to explain why, uh, after this video, I kind of made this very short, brief video of, of just me coming to a piano and just kind of looking at it for a moment and then you hear me play a few notes and for those that know these notes are very very familiar uh, these are the last few notes of the ferality uh, aqua theme and I felt it was appropriate to sort of signify that as a closing of a chapter which it was I had my I had my fun time with Ferality and the folks involved with it, but unfortunately I lost a friend over it. You know, I mean, people come and go, but I wouldn't, I never had anticipated that that would be the end result of of such a thing so but there was light at the end of this I decided that I wanted to go further with this even further than I ever had before and I think what really sparked it with me was there was so I had this thought going around in my head um, Usually, th this tends to happen quite a bit when I listen to certain music. I get a lot of strong visuals with certain things. Not not every song, but once in a while, there's a particular song or two or more that when I listen to them, they just invoke such a strong, vivid visual tapestry. And it's wonderful. It's almost like my mind is producing its own video or just visuals in a way to accompany the song and I think you know this is something that a lot of people can experience and of course to them it would also depend on certain music and certain feelings that are invoked certainly but it was always one of those things that I wish I could just show that um, and really this is something I've tried to do in the past I've tried to express myself creatively through artwork. I actually did used to draw for a time, but but that wasn't really something that took off too well. I mean, it did have some potential promise, but it was it just ended up not being something I decided I wanted to do. Eventually there was the prospect of writing. And that went pretty well. That really allowed me to express a lot of the lore and such that centered around this character and the universe that they lived in. Something that I really wanted to share with the world. Not that I really wanted to share for the purpose of ever 
you know, getting acknowledgement or attention or anything like that. It was just something I just wanted to share. Because that's what you do when you create something that has a creative aspect to it. You just want to share it. Maybe not always, though. Sometimes it's just for yourself and just to be able to express and channel certain things. Maybe not necessarily for anyone else to see, but usually... I would say with most things you, it is something you want to just, just show off and be like, this is something I made and this is why. And usually these kind of things help you kind of glimpse into the lives of these people. It's like a little, a brief snapshot, a little window to their soul of something that they made and has definite meaning and impact. That's something I've always wanted to do. But for a while there, it just seemed like I just didn't have a good way to, to do that. The writing just ended up being, you know, one of those things that not a lot of people really pay much attention to. And I would have to do something more with it than just write it out. And I just never really was sure what. Part of me wish I could have made like, like a movie or a series or something about my mythos, my lore, and that would be a lot more palatable. You know, people would actually be willing to see that than just, you know, read some bullshit on paper or screen. And But I never really knew how I could approach that and it just seemed like way out of my league. So I just kind of let it bury itself after a while. And then I realized through everything we've talked about so far, through the editing of the compilations through making just kind of revisiting some old written works some poetry and just kind of visualizing it a little bit in VR chat making the couple parody videos that that I did and the um, making that little short but sweet video that just kind of described a closing chapter of my life it's staring me right in the face this whole time this concept of just having access to practically just almost limitless amount of worlds, environments, avatars, and things like that, that just, I could just take this and do something with it. Why not? Because before, the concept of, like, making, a, you know, videos and stuff like that just seemed a bit much because there's, you know, equipment you have to buy and finding, like, sites to record stuff and being able to get to those places. And, and that's just, like, the tip of the iceberg. So conceptually, it just seems a bit much for me to delve into. But here... In VR chat, I was already doing it. You can just pull out a camera. You can use software to record videos and then use software to edit those videos and add some cool stuff to them and basically end up making something really cool that doesn't require a lot of investment other than just some of your own time. But that's something that, you know, is a lot more reasonable. And so. I had this, like I said, I had this idea going in my head through a particular song. And at the time, I, well, I say at the time, I mean, I, I don't think I would ever stop listening to them. But there's a group called The Midnight that really captures uh, the essences of times past through their own basically style of, of synthwave music. And it really hits home for someone like myself because a lot of the ideas and concepts that they bring up in their music is just so familiar and so nostalgic and it really just brings you back to those time periods. Well, there was one in particular called Synthetic that just, whenever I listen to it, I, it just really, I don't know why, but I kept, I kept, it just kept going around in my head thinking, there's something I want to do with this. Something wonderful. And so I thought about it and I'm like, maybe I could make a music video from this. 
kind of like my own interpretation, basically. And so I decided to give it a shot. And once you know it, it was actually pretty good, all things considered. It's my first actual real produced thing that I felt quite proud of. Not to say the past things I had done weren't, but like this was something that I could genuinely call my own, other than, you know, the assets that I use, but I think that goes without saying the actual production, editing, and just conceptualizing it came from me. And that means a lot. There's people out there that just don't know how to always express certain aspects of themselves. And really, for the longest time, even that was me. But finally, after so many years, here it was. And just to see this video come to light with the heart and time I gave it. And just to look back and be like, this is something I made and I feel good about that. But it's not just about making something. It's about being able to express what's on the mind in such a way that it just materializes and becomes tangible. Because... Thoughts aren't really tangible in the sense that we can easily convey them to other people. Usually the way we do this is through art forms. And this is why creative expression is important because it gives people the opportunity to make real, or at least as much as possible, these concepts that play throughout our minds. And so this is why synthetic was truly the first step in that milestone in what would be my video production. I look back at even to this day, I had made synthetic, I think it was in later 2022. Unfortunately, I can't quite remember the exact time frame because I ended up remastering a lot of my music videos. So the actual date that they were created on YouTube is more reflective of the remastery date than the actual original date. So, but I feel like it was about later 2022, I think is when the first uh, music video synthetic came out so in synthetic also this is where you'll see my puppeteering with facial expressions and just uh, general acting really start to to come through and uh, just really add weight to the whole thing really um, so as I said this that initial early application of doing that back with the aqua spray uh, video really helped to translate much further into this and would continue to do so for all my music videos really so synthetic um as i said was just about the uh initial expression of being able to do something like this this whole thing just kind of really gives into the whole concept of how my character is cybernetic and therefore isn't completely organic. So synthetic kind of plays into that really nicely as a concept and really shows how Arctasha is literally a artificial intelligence that is living inside an organic body. Um, there's of course a whole story behind all that but that's going to be for something else entirely in the future if i will ever go over something like that but that's basically what synthetic meant to me and as i said it was a solid first way to get into this new hobby that i realized i was really enjoying and then after synthetic i decided to do something a little different uh rather than doing a music video I kind of did something that was a little more I guess you could say cinematic um, in a sense and what this video was about is that it kind of looked back as the name applies to kind of the older days of VR chat and I was just kind of showing off one of the first worlds I ever been to in VR chat and for a lot of us that came into VR chat around that time that usually was the first world you would ever see which was the old hub 
the old hub was at the time a world that you would go to anytime you logged in for the first time or really anytime you would log in uh, because this was back before there were no there, there was no such thing as home worlds uh, whenever you log in you would immediately join a public instance of the old hub and from there you could really go anywhere also there was no such thing as favoriting worlds or anything like that so it it was definitely uh, different times back then for sure you couldn't favorite avatars or anything like that if you wanted a particular avatar uh, you usually had to go to an avatar world and find the pedestal that the avatar was on and then you'd have the avatar and then you go to whatever world that you were intending to or whatever friends you wanted to hang out with but anyway this video helped to illustrate a lot of those old days of, of your chat and kind of explored the uh this version of the old hub in kind of a more cinematic way where i was kind of trudging through it and eventually reaching this uh, pillar of flame which i walk into because why not <laughs> uh but then from this it shows that we get transported to a completely different plane now this was interesting uh this next area so what was interesting about uh this map is called the underground energy core and i have to thank uh, a friend of mine cj for this because uh, i think at one point when i brought some folks here they were mentioning that you know what's interesting about this world is like i feel like your staff could have easily come from this place like made here or something because the way it looks like the overall aesthetic of it definitely resounds similar to my actual staff um, which my main characters are usually seen with um, and I kept that to heart and I kind of liked the idea so I basically kind of integrated that here um, where upon arrival uh, Arktasha somehow lost his staff but it is here that the staff was originally created so I decided to etch that into my lore. And sure enough, we see the sequence of him kind of going through and recreating the staff. And at the end, he energizes it by bringing it to the core. And it was, it was kind of cool, kind of neat, pretty different. Uh, I wanted to do this because I really like to do more like cinematic style stuff. And this was kind of like a, kind of like a dry run of that just to see what more I could do with that. But then after this, it um, went back to music videos. So the next one I ended up doing was The Destination. And this is at the time when uh, CJ and I were actually together um, as partners. And that uh, went on for about a year before we, you know, unfortunately broke up. But it was a, it was a mutual thing, so it wasn't too bad. But during that time, we decided that it would be nice to make a video that kind of dedicated our just us really and of course what better way to do it than to an artist that we both liked which again was the midnight so this went to the song of uh vampires by them which is a song that we just really both related to like that was practically our song at the time so and uh, i decided to do an interesting thing with this where it was like a lot of driving around uh in fact the map behind me is the exact map that was used uh, for the recording of that video so this is uh driving city at night by amasake and it still to this day remains one of my favorite um nighttime city maps that you can just kind of just drive around in, just enjoy the views and everything that's in it it's it's an older map but it still somehow manages to hold together pretty well um be sure to check it out it's it's really nice but yeah the whole point of that video was for for him and i and it came up pretty good uh it conceptually was showing me driving to a destination and then him also going to a destination thus meeting at that spot and going to a very uh very nice place up in the hills that overlooked the rest of the city now the funny thing about this is that the later parts of the video which show um which may seem at a glance look like the same city that 
is this map, but it actually was a completely different map altogether. I just loved that it pretty much exhibited a lot of the same kind of feel and even had a bridge in the background over like water and stuff like that. I'm like, this is almost too perfect. So I had to film it in that other map uh, as well, which I don't quite remember the map offhand, but it is credited in the video if you're curious about that one too. Now, this would be important later uh, because once that video was made, well, sadly, I think after about a month or so, month or two maybe, something like that, um, we had uh, broken up. So it uh, was unfortunate, but, you know, as I said, it was a mutual thing. And it was something that just, I feel just inevitably had to be done, I guess. So it's whatever. But because of that, I had to kind of express that in some way. And I felt it was appropriate to do what would be called until next time, which is usually a thing I say to somebody whenever I'm usually saying goodbye. Cause, uh, I don't, I really don't like saying goodbye. And this is, um, something an old friend, uh, used to say to me actually. But yeah, this friend um, realized I had I had issues with saying goodbye at times when it came to just leaving, and he's like, "Well, you know, instead of saying goodbye, you could just always say until next time." And I looked at him, and I'm like, "You know what? I like that." And I've pretty much adopted it since. Or usually, I do say that quite a bit. And so, therefore, here we are. The title of this, of this particular video is going to be called that. And it's pretty short and sweet. It's played to a song uh, by Boards of Canada, which is another artist I have a particular liking for. And uh, the interesting thing is the song itself is also pretty short and sweet. So it definitely fit the bill for the whole thing I was trying to convey here. So pretty simple. I'm seen walking up to a familiar spot which was the spot that cj and i had ended up in in the previous video and walked up to the ledge kind of reflected for a bit and overlooking the city once more getting up and then uh pretty much leaving off into the distance yeah so i don't think too much else needs to be said about that one I think it says quite a bit for itself really after that after some time i felt i needed to shift gears and kind of brighten up the mood a bit and this is where i had a lot of fun with my next one called electrified which used a an old relatively older avatar uh an older raccoon avatar by milo that uh it's not exactly the most common thing you'll see anymore these days in VR chat, but I felt like this was the avatar to use for this particular video. And interestingly enough, it did just seem to work out pretty well because I wanted something that was a lot more energetic, fun, just, just really, just really colorful. And, um, so this this was uh set to a song by the fat rat uh literally called electrified and and uh this was an interesting video because this actually used uh mixed footage not from just vr chat but also chill out vr as well um so and this is where you can st kind of where the lines start to blur a bit because it's not always apparent which scenes are from chill out vr and which ones are from vr chat and that was the whole point i wanted to express that you know these are very similar platforms and you can have very similar experiences in them but yeah electrified was just a fun video just a lot of energy lots of good vibes and i liked it it, it was a fun one to work on and definitely uh helped to uh offset the more melancholy mood of the previous video although sadly that didn't last very long because the next video anyone was sadly about 
loneliness. It was about the fact that I realized I was once again lacking someone in my life. So really nothing, nothing too crazy about this one. It's just a very emotional piece meant to convey just that very feeling of wanting somebody. And this particular version of the song, um, it, it just, it's really nice. It really hits on the emotional weight of how I felt about, about that. And this one was also really nice because it really helped to uh, show off a lot more of the Avatar puppeteering, continue to refine that and really add some expressional weight to the things I do. Lots of emotional just acting and expression went to this one. You can see it through a lot of the body language and the way things were conveyed in that one. I really liked it. It really came up pretty good. But once again, we had to switch gears. Can't be sad all the time, right? Just, you know, when it's appropriate. Nothing wrong with a little emotional uh, channeling of things. But it was definitely time to go on to much brighter topics. And this one, I really wanted to just create as, as a way of saying, just acknowledging the friends and people I've met in life and just the uh, folks in, in general that maybe I've yet to meet. And that's where Sunset came in, which is another one by The Midnight. It's almost like there's a pattern here or something. But yeah, I wanted to um, basically go around and just film various friends that I knew, people that I knew, and kind of put together sort of a dedication to them. And this was one that took a bit because I wanted to try to capture as many people as possible. And in reality, I knew I couldn't capture everybody I knew. And for one reason or another, um, because they just weren't around when I was around or they haven't been around in a while or, you know, there's, there's quite a few factors there. And plus, I, realistically speaking, I can't fit everybody into a single video anyway. So I kind of had to take what I could get. But yeah, I give it about a month basically. And if after a month, you know, there wasn't really anyone else I could record, I was just going to end it there, work on it, get out of the way, which I did. And thus, Sunset was a thing. And uh, once again, continuing to refine and hone in on those puppeteering skills. And it uh, came up pretty good overall. But yeah, it was just ultimately an acknowledgement of friends and good times and just being together and how important that is. It really is. Uh, it's just important that we don't forget about those who are in our lives for sure. So, yeah. And once again, I think we're seeing an interesting pattern here where it seems like every other video is like good, sad, good, sad, happy, sad, whatever. Oh, goodness gracious. But, you know, the sad truth is that uh, this is just something I struggle with once in a while and so this next video is I still haven't found what I'm looking for, which is the literal uh, song by U2, which, as the song implies, just really is about the constant search for that someone and just never finding it. I had to get the song out because it was just on my mind again and I wanted to be able to express that. So this video didn't really do anything too fancy compared to other videos and I say that because one thing I was also doing with each video is I was trying to find some way to do something a little bit more than like a prior video I would do just to kind of constantly build up this uh, this skill set this experience and really push my boundaries and limits to see what I could do but this one didn't really do that so much and that was okay you know it doesn't always have to to be like that but still it came out pretty decent I think it could have been done better but I mean what's there is it's fine it's it was an okay one but it definitely brings out some emotional value that I was feeling when I made it for sure so and the scenery depicted just kind of also helps further solidify and 
provide a foundation for it where I just feel like I'm in a barren field of just nothingness when it comes to looking for this someone. It's hard. So this next video um, kind of breaks the mold with the weird, happy, sad sort of cycle we saw with the previous videos. Rather, this is more of a dedication to the old days of your chap. And uh, so the way this one was produced was that it pretty much only used worlds that were like from 2018 or older. So nothing really newer than that at all. And a lot of the worlds that I would use were pretty iconic ones, ones that I think any old time folks here that have been around for as long as I have, uh, if not longer, would recognize and be like, ah, I know, I, I, rem I remember that map, yeah. Um, so I would just kind of go through a lot of these and just kind of make something of it. A lot of symbolism to this video too, where you just kind of see me go through and kind of walk through these various worlds and probably the most important aspect is at the very end where we see the plaque of the um, uh, basically dedicating the old community of VRChat from 2017 and how we should never forget what we have because it'll never come back and that part really particularly strikes me every time I see that because it uh, it's true it's, you know, times change, and you can only really go forward. I mean, sometimes you can kind of stop to reflect on things to, and get a sense of nostalgia and whatever, and, you know, at least we have the benefit of being able to do that, just kind of relive those time periods, but ultimately, what's done is done. And anytime anyone asks me about that whole thing, well, what happened in, you know, 2018 that caused the community of VRChat in 2017 to just kind of not be the same anymore? And, well, the very simple answer to that is it got popular. And... You know, when something like that happens, it really changes things. You know, for both good and ill, really. The great thing is it brought in a lot more people and a lot more walks of life. But that sense of, you know, having those tight-knit communities just went away. Now, granted, you know, it's not to say that they completely dispersed or anything like that. I mean, obviously, the, there's probably still a lot of them that live on to this day in their own way, but at the very least back then, you tended to know a lot of people. And these days, there's just so so many. It's It's... Well, let me put it this way. At that time, you could walk into a room, see a lot of yellow plates. These days... Uh, you walk into room, you'd be lucky to see, you know, any yellow names, which is to say that they're friends. Unless, of course, you're joining, you know, some circles that you normally hang out in. But, but basically, this is to say if you just go into a random world, it was unusual to see, you know, some people that you knew. And these days, it's, it's not always the case. Sometimes I go into worlds and it's just mostly people I don't even know. And it's not to say there's anything wrong with that. It's just, it's just to contrast the differences between the two time periods of then and now, really, and how things have changed. So this uh, video was a dedication to that. And just like the song implies, some of us are still here. And we still remember. And we won't ever forget. So, around middle parts of 2023, I decided to take a break from doing music videos for a time. 
and mainly because I wanted to re-explore an old concept I had done with the second video I made called A Look Back, which was trying to do more of a cinematic approach to things. And I had this kind of like interesting idea going in my head of just something that kind of like peaked a little bit into my lore, but kind of not as directly tied in at least not as directly tied in as it would normally be interpreted but anyway so i decided to do this quick little two and a half minute video called escape and it was just a sort of a little uh little video that would be voiced over by the character that was depicted in it explaining how they were uh held in this facility for a long time and recently were able to get out because of a some evacuation protocol that occurred and of course in the midst of that they took advantage of it and just got the fuck out of there they didn't care why or what was going on they were done they were just ready to go out get out um and it's a pretty short and sweet video and it was pretty good um a lot of people liked it and i certainly liked it too and i thought to myself you know what that went pretty well let's uh let's do a follow-up let's do a second video of it that continues the kind of the thing i had set up from that first video and therefore um escape two or escape uh and therefore escape episode two was a thing and that went for about five minutes and went into more detail about what was going on then I did a third episode, which was about 10 minutes long. And finally, I did a fourth episode, which was about 20 minutes long. Kind of funny how each one pretty much doubled the duration of the previous. Didn't intend it to, to go that way, but that's just amusingly enough how it happened. And after those four episodes, it pretty much came to a close. So uh, I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail about it. I think it's just honestly worth uh, watching yourself to see what it's about but I will at least cover uh, the general meaning uh, behind it um, and you'll kind of see this if you had seen the whole thing or if you actually watch it fully and um, take it all in but uh, realistically it's about the struggle of loneliness and trying to breach beyond our means of feeling trapped into that mindset and to try to find any way possible for connection and whatnot that's what the entire series was all about as it's sort of like inner core meaning on the surface it, it does look like just like a production that just tells the tale of someone that's just trying to get out of this place and finding weird things along the way and trying to find any way to get meaning in their life and whatnot but truth be told the whole series it's just a whole statement about the struggle of loneliness, the struggle of trying to find connection, the struggle of just finding something to latch onto and just to pull away from this, this thing that constantly anchors you back again and again. And it's just trying to pull yourself out of that routine of just finding something. That's what escape is all about at the end of the day. It's a whole series that is a big symbolism of that very struggle from start to finish. And probably one of the most beautiful scenes in the entire series is at the end. And I think you'll know what I mean when you see it. It's the kind of thing we all wish we could feel. So escape was my first like little mini series and it was a nice aside from the usual music video stuff i did and uh something a lot more cinematic a lot more story based something that actually was something that could convey something an idea a concept and just be entertaining just be fun and i think i accomplished just that plus this allowed me to explore more with my mythos and some other characters that I had that would be fun to kind of act out and just kind of bring to light in some way that was definitely very nice to work on. Uh, 
bit of time had passed since this video and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do next. But then after you know, a couple months of not really putting out anything, I decided that, you know what? I'm really feeling this song. It was kind of like similar to the whole thing with synthetic way back when, where it just, it's just an idea that kept bouncing around in my head, just kept bouncing around in my head. And I'm just like, okay, I guess, I guess I need to do something with this. Went back to the next video here, which was the inner struggle. So this is a song that's uh, called Mr. Fear by CMS. And this one pretty much took like a lot of the concept I'd learned through making my music videos and kind of stuff I learned through escape. Uh, in fact, one of the amusing things about this, uh, this particular video is it makes a lot of references to escape and a lot of the scenery and the characters that you see. So it was kind of like a homage in a way, uh, to my mini series. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, combined a lot of those, uh, aspects and really made for a, a pretty nice and just really good flow of a music video that was a lot of fun to work on. Uh, really no uh, significant meaning to like really bring up with this one. I, it's kind of another one of those ones that just kind of speaks for itself. So, um, but yeah, it was, but yeah, it was definitely a, a, a homage to uh, Escape and I really liked how that one came out and also featured this uh, particular avatar for the first time as well. Fall was crazy. Fall was taking a song called Falling in Love by Fantagram and pretty much mimicking its style uh, because I found that that video is insane with its editing. Like there's, there's so much cuts and shifts and whatnot. And uh, so that was the whole point of that. I wanted to see how much I could push my editing capabilities and create something that was just really intensive with that. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, Fall had 230 cuts. It's a lot of cuts. And uh, it conveys the uh, music video style pretty well. In fact, a lot of the things I did in it are direct inspirations from the music video. But there's uh, one scene in particular uh, that I'm particularly proud of that isn't really in the style of the music video. It's kind of my own interpretation of it. Uh, there's this section here where it's just a continuous shot that's just slowly orbiting around and zooming in close on my character as they're just singing uh, the song. And this continuous shot was pretty challenging. Uh, I think it took about three or four takes, which honestly isn't bad, all things considered. Uh, but it, it basically what I was doing was, uh, piloting the camera just, just so also singing the song to make sure that my lip sync was doing its job and also to, um, puppeteer my avatar a bit all at the same time. Oh, holy cow. That, that was something, but the result, uh, was a very, very beautifully done uh, scene in the entire video. So that was really cool. Also, um, one thing I need to mention too is after doing Escape, uh, after finishing up with that, uh, I pretty much went away from using Shotcut to going over to DaVinci Resolve. So anything that I had done after escape was pretty much done in that program. So it's kind of one of those things that I really wish I had done a lot sooner, but here we are. And DaVinci Resolve was allowing me to do some pretty incredible things and definitely allowing for better stability and better performance compared to Shotcut. So it's, it, it was great to get into a new editor that could really further expand my horizons in, in some ways. Now, the most recent video I put out is VR chat Friday love, which is basically, um, in a similar style to Brooklyn Friday love by the midnight. What a surprise. Another midnight song. I know, but, um, uh, so I wanted to, uh, do something that was similar to that. And 
this would be my actual first group directed project because a lot of my projects uh, prior were all done pretty much just by myself. There may have been occasions where I would call on somebody to help me with, with something, but usually that wasn't very often. Uh, like Velocimus helped me with his role in the second episode of Escape. Uh, CJ helped me uh, basically play as myself in episode four because I needed someone to play as a stand-in for me because I, you know, I can green screen a lot of interesting things, but one thing that's a little difficult to do is to green screen myself hugging myself. Uh, I'll just let you watch and see what I mean, but uh, yeah, so, but yeah, otherwise a lot of this stuff was just pretty much done by me. So this, this was going to be different. So there was uh, 15 of us total and I basically wanted to just have everyone act natural and just, uh, you know, hang out, talk, whatever, just, 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 just act natural, you know, just, just hang out. And, uh, I would just go around asking people to do certain things and then boom, after one hour filming, we were pretty much done. It went pretty smoothly. Uh, granted, the first hour was just getting everyone together and, and whatnot, but I kind of had already planned for that. So actually, the two-hour window I was uh, anticipating um, was actually pretty accurate. So, And yeah, this one turned out really nice. It, it was fun. It, it's just a fun song. It's It's good vibes. It's good times. It's reinforcing you know the importance of spending time with people that you know and just making those connections and keep solidifying them so no real fancy meaning behind this one it's just just a fun one to work on for sure so we're kind of getting to the end of this now and uh as of the recording this i'm actually starting to work on the second season of escape now because the first season went as well as it did. So there's an intro out there for it right now, which is basically kind of sets the stage for it. So it's just just a quick little video with the title splash and we'll see what happens basically. So that is yet to uh, come to fruition. Uh, but yeah, so let me close here by saying that uh, I've come quite a ways within a short period of time really this past year um year and a half has been really something like i i just did not think i was gonna get this far with what i have um and all this i i'm still just i don't know it's it's surreal. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know what to think, um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's kind of where I've come from, and this is where I am at, and we'll see um, we'll see where I go from here. So I'm looking forward to um, working on the second season for Escape and getting that out, and seeing what other productions I can make along the way. So, but, uh, I think that pretty much concludes everything for now. And, um, I just want to thank all of you again for taking the time to watch this and to get a little more glimpse into me as the creator of all this and the kind of stuff I had to go through with getting to where I am today. So, so with that said, I hope to see you again next time. And yes, until next time, take care.